is a Laker, but will further upgrades be impossible because of the timestamp on the deal? Woj weighs in. Plus, Houston, hello. Tense times. The GM's reaction to the report that there is Rockets red glaring between James Harden and Chris Paul. The Raptors parade. It mixes joy, overcrowding, confusion. It underscores the basketball question for our PTI Fresh topic, should Kawhi stay or go? And predicting the next king of the AFC North. Well, somebody has to win it. Damian Woody explains why it will not be the Browns. This is SportsCenter. Give somebody a hug today. A ha, 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 ha. Final lap, Keith and Kevin with you. We ran some numbers this afternoon, and get this, KO. 4% of Canada attended the Raptors parade. I'm not kidding, but the news cycle and the champs is so last week. They can thank the Lakers. 4-4-4. Four, four, four. Uh, Kevin, it's just starting. The Lakers have now gone 48 hours without a franchise reshaping trade. But clearly at this hour, they're working to do that while the Rockets aren't working at all. They're just feuding. Yeah, so if you're coming up from a cryogenics free trial, the Lakers traded for Anthony Davis. Now what? Another max player via free agency, Kawhi Leonard, Kyrie Irving, Kemba Walker. Somebody actually named Max? A lot of that depends on L.A.'s precise cap space. If the A.D. deal becomes official on July 6th, as has been reported, and not later, the Lakers will likely have $23.7 million under the cap, not exactly enough to sign a Max player. Maxi Kleba, maybe. And beyond the questions about the Lakers roster construction, there's the psychological construction. How will LeBron and Davis fit? Davis could be LeBron's most individually gifted teammate ever. We've seen all-stars like Chris Bosh and Kevin Love adjust their game to LeBron before. And should the Lakers be considered title faves after this deal? Right now, Vegas says yes. Three to one favorites after they were 25 to one in mid-May. Of course, they were betting favorites before the trade. Woj in a moment. First, Stephen A. I think that it's valid that the Lakers are favorites to win the title next year because I think the supplementary parts that they need are going to be easier to acquire than it would have been to acquire a superstar. Now that you have the combination of a LeBron James with a Anthony Davis, it will be easier to lure those other pieces that you need. They were able to hold on to Kyle Kuzma, and I think that's a big, big deal here. When you talk about the Lakers and what they surrendered, I think the fact that those two things transpired firmly positions the Lakers as one of the final four teams in the entire NBA. However, as promised, Adrian Wojnarowski joins us now. Woj, LeBron returns, AG, AD arrives, and the Ball family has been canceled. So big weekend in L.A. But their chances of getting a free agent to go with the big two hindered by the postmark, essentially, on the AD deal? Yeah, they needed a July 30th completion of this deal mm -hmm. uh, with that number four pick in it uh, to be able to have around $32, $33 million in cap space, enough for a max deal. Right now, they're closer to $24 million. And there's no A-list star who's going to take that kind of discount, really even any of the B-list big stars. So right now it looks like they would probably want to break up that $23, $24 million to bring in multiple players. And given how barren the rest of their roster is right now, they don't even have a starting five. That's probably the better route for the Lakers to go. There's no way to correct. Was it a mistake relative to the Davis trade? Did they have to pull the trigger for fear he was going to go somewhere else? Well, what it had to do was the fact that that pick was in the draft and they needed essentially, um, it would hold up other teams. If the Pelicans trade that pick, if the Pelicans use it, um, it would hold up those teams' cap space. Um, they, don't have to, they don't have to wait on L.A. with this. L.A. would love for them to do it. Mm -hmm. Nobody else is obligated to. New Orleans wants to get this deal done on the 6th when the free agent moratorium ends. All right, well, stand by. I believe we have a caller in Connecticut with a question uh, for you about another Western team going in a different kind of direction. Kevin? Yeah, okay. What is going on in Houston? The other big story in the NBA on ESPN.com. NBA reporter Tim McMahon details the unsettling vibe within the Rockets organization. Now, they may be a tag team in TV commercials, but there's drama surrounding James Harden and Chris Paul. Houston has a problem, and it involves their two biggest stars. And the architect behind this roster is embracing it. There's going to be times when they're extremely competitive, extremely 
uh, uh, focused on, you know, how do we get to that next level? And when we don't, there's going to be frustration. That's how Rockets GM Daryl Morey responded this morning on Golik and Wingo to a story published today by ESPN's Tim McMahon detailing issues between James Harden and Chris Paul. A source aware of the two-star dynamic told McMahon that Chris wants to coach James and Harden looks at Paul like, you can't beat your man, just shut up and watch me. The story continues with Paul's frustration with that Harden has a tendency to ignore the small details, including moving around to help spacing. According to McMahon, it got to the point where CP3 would ask head coach Mike D'Antoni to keep the beard on the bench when Paul ran the second unit on the floor, while Harden would demand to get back into the game. We have two high-level competitors, Chris and James, who... Their only goal in life at this point is to win the title. But can Maury keep them together and remain aggressive this offseason, with the Warriors likely taking a step back due to injuries and the Lakers now adding Anthony Davis this past weekend? We're going to do moves to, to show people that we should be the favorite in the West. Yeah, that's going to create a little tension when, when we do that. At the end of the day, we're going to have at least our starting five back, and we're going to spend mid-level, we're going to spend into the tax. But will they be willing to spend money and add years to D'Antoni's contract, a point of contention where talks have stalled this offseason? He's going to be our coach next year. We're hoping to work things out uh, you know, for the future right now. Uh, if we don't, we're going to work it out after next season. We love Mike. We're going to work it out. Woj is back with us now. So Maury says the organization loves Dan Tony, but where are they in negotiations right now as their head coach enters the final season on his current deal? Uh, Kevin, they've been talking, and uh, Daryl Morey and, and uh, Rockets owner uh, went to West Virginia, spent some time with him uh, last week, and are trying to find a pathway here to add a, at least a year onto his contract so he's not going in to the final year of his deal because that will help allow the Rockets to hire a coaching staff. They've got some significant openings on that staff and you're usually limited in the pool of candidates you can get if they feel like they're going there on a one year uh, for a one year basis with a lame duck. All right now tension between star teammates. It's not uncommon in this league especially when you have strong personalities. What effect could the Harden Paul relationship have on how the team handles the offseason starting with CP3's future here. Kevin, CP3 is owed so much money, three years, over $100 million left on his deal. Uh, and given his advancing age, um, missing games with injury, that's a really difficult contract to move, even if the Rockets decided to try to do that. Uh, you would end up having to take back, uh, you know, probably another contract that you didn't love or have to attach draft picks to it. They don't want to do that. I think Harden CP3, like every other star partnership in this league, uh, they're going to have to figure out how to work through all this. And I do agree with Daryl. These are two guys who want to win a championship. That's what's left for them. And this Rockets team, as the Golden State Warriors look, will look very different next year, there's no reason for them to believe that they can't uh, compete to win the West and get to the finals. Right, when you look at the starting five, though, and then you look at the luxury tax, how aggressive will this team be in the offseason? Well, they've insisted that if there's a chance to improve the roster, they will go in to the tax. And that's been, uh, you know, not every owner in the league is willing to do that. But, like, they've got to improve this team's bench. Uh, you've seen the teams who've won in this league, Toronto, you know, the Golden State teams that won championships, as great as their starters were, they had deeper benches. That Milwaukee team, the way Denver is built moving forward, you're not doing this with just two or three players. And Houston recognizes that, and they've got to round out this roster. Now, despite all this, Houston's still ranking top five when you look at the 2020 odds to win a championship. Woj, thank you. Thanks, Kev. Still ahead on the big show, so your team Bay finals for Toronto. I feel like I just did something special for them. as he continues one of the great runs in NBA playoff history. When the mayor of Toronto urged each of the 2,930,000 residents of that city to attend the Raptors title parade today, he probably should have said, I mean this metaphorically. At least a million and a half answered the call. 
The parade start was delayed by hours. There were fears of overcrowding, even dangerous overcrowding and other dangers as well. So enraptured or enraptured that many of them staked out key parade viewing spots last night. Torontonians are still partying like the buzzer just sounded. They might as well be denying that there are hockey or baseball teams in their city. Our Michelle Steele reports from the rapture. For the better part of one day in Toronto, dinosaurs once again rule the earth. This is why we wanted to win a championship. This is unbelievable. Unbelievable. And we ain't even close to being done. The last few days have been amazing. No sleep, a lot of celebrating, and we're going to keep going. When they were singing Oh Canada in game one, you could see the looks on the Warriors' faces that they knew they had their hands full. I mean, and that had a lot to do with they knew the whole country was behind the team. And yet, amid the national euphoria that has surrounded this first ever championship run, like a crack of lightning that threatens to pour rain on a literal parade, NBA free agency and Kawhi's decision awaits. Enjoy this moment and have fun with it. Aha, ha, ha, ha. Kawhi didn't address his future, but in a few short weeks, these fans will know his answer for sure. Until then, they can show their gratitude now and hope he's in Raptors Red next year, too. In Toronto, I'm Michelle Steele, ESPN. The celebration briefly turned into a nightmare, though, when, according to Toronto police, two people there were shot and those in the area began to flee. Neither injury was considered life-threatening. Two suspects were quickly apprehended along with their weapons, and the Raptors and the dignitaries stayed in place on the podium to urge everyone to remain calm, which, for the most part, they appear to have done. The partying continued before and after. So does the Kumbaya. Guess who took out a full-page ad of congratulations in the Toronto Star newspaper today? Yes, the Golden State Warriors. Of course, please note, between Steph Curry and Kyle Lowry, whose face is facing the camera and it's not Kawhi because of course he might not have a Toronto shelf life but should he that's the question we put to Messrs Kornheiser and Wilbon in today's fresh segment from PTI gentlemen all right Wilbon what is your guess today will Kawhi Leonard stay in Toronto or will he leave I think he was the same guess as in Friday I have no idea and neither does anybody else and anybody who says he or she knows what Kawhi Leonard is going to do is lying or opposing because they don't know because he's the greatest mystery in the basketball yeah. universe yeah. then nobody knows the Toronto players uh, during the spring would sidle up to anybody they thought who knew and said hey, what do you know they don't know right Fred Van Vliet though put this to me in perfect perspective when he said I don't know but we've done all we can yeah. we've done all we can as teammates uh, Masai Ujiri is management the Owners, they have, I mean, he is beloved there now, Tony. They've done everything they can do that's out of their hands. Yeah, so, I mean, my sense of this is that he is unlike most of the athletes we deal with. Most, not all, but most. We don't really have a sense of him. We have a real sense of LeBron James. Right. We have a real sense of James Harden. Right. A real sense, obviously, Anthony Davis wanted to get out. <laughs> he wore a shirt that said, that's all, folks. So we don't have this with Kawhi Leonard. It could come down to something very, very small. It could be... Does he not like being in cold weather or does he like being in cold weather? Is he troubled by being in another country where the money has different colors? I mean, you have no <laughs> idea. The guy played for Popovich for a million years. They didn't years know. They don't know Popovich him. Popovich didn't know him. Didn't know no. him. So the answer to the question is. We don't know. Mm -hmm. but let me ask you this. You and I have worked and lived in some place different than our hometowns, both of which we love. That's right. Isn't there something to be said for not going and putting that pressure sure. on yourself? Sure. He can live in L.A. Yeah. That he can live in San Diego. But that house can still be also, home. There's also something to be said for this. What he did for Toronto and for Canada, by extension, no one had ever done before. So if he wants to Drop leave, the mic. It's a drop the mic moment. No one will begrudge Yeah. Him. No one. That's it. We're done. Back to you. Number one. With the first pick in the NBA draft, it's talked about. Zion Williamson. Zion. Zion Williamson. Zion. Zion. Hyped up. Yeah, freakish athlete. Like once in a generation type athlete. Remember. Shaquille O'Neal. Tim Duncan. LeBron James. But after the prize at the top. It's the Zion Show. It's the Zion Show. 
are hidden gems that shine just as bright. With the 15th pick, Kawhi Leonard, Steve Nash, Giannis Adetokounmpo. And while they may not be number one, with the 13th pick, oh! the 7th pick, Curry for three, bang! NBA history is written. With the 5th pick, Dwayne Wade, Vince Carter, you are amazing! And greatness, with the 3rd pick, here's Michael at the foul line, a shot on Elo, He's just a lucky number away. Three days until the 2019 NBA draft on ESPN. The top three picks are looking to be locks. ESPN.com's most recent mock draft has Zion going number one to the Pelicans. John ja Morant number two to Memphis. R.J. Barrett third overall to the Knicks. Jay Billis has much more on the potential stars. We'll hear after Zion. Jay? This much we know, Zion Williamson will be the number one overall pick in the 2019 NBA Draft. The question then becomes, who goes second, R.J. Barrett or John ja Morant? Entering college, Barrett was ESPN's number one ranked recruit and the presumptive number one pick in this year's draft. While Morant's emergence from no-name high school recruit to NCAA tournament darling is almost the stuff of fiction. Morant, a former AAU teammate of Zion Williamson, has big-time game with small-town life experience. Morant is a dynamic athlete with legit triple-double potential at the next level. He's explosive in transition and has excellent passing instincts and a slick handle. Barrett hails from basketball hotbed Mississauga, Ontario, and is the godson of two-time NBA MVP Steve Nash. Barrett's combination of size, agility, and body control are truly special. A 6'7 wing that can play the point and get to the rim and finish with ease. Morant is the first player to average 20 points and 10 assists per game since assists became an official stat in 1983-84. Now Barrett shattered both the Duke and ACC records for scoring while being named a consensus first team All-American. As different as both of these players' talents are, they both have the potential to be marquee players for a franchise looking to make a statement. Still to come on SportsCenter, T-minus 72 hours to D-Day, the draft. For all in the Anthony Davis trade, the aftermath here over the weekend is what will the rest of the Lakers roster look like? They have ability to sign a max player. Depends on their cap space, though. Key dates to keep in mind. If the Davis trade is finalized on July 6th, as reported, and Davis does not waive a $4 million trade bonus, they've got $23.7 million to spend. If the deal is finalized on July 30th, that figure would, would then balloon to $32.5 million for the Lakers in room. Dave McMenamin covers the team for ESPN and joins us now. Dave, uh, what will play into the timing of when this trade will officially be done? Well, Kevin, the two dates that you just mentioned are important, the July 6th and the July 30th. But the third date that's perhaps the most important is June 30th. That is the start when teams can talk to prospective free agents. And the Lakers are going to reach out to those guys that you see on that list. The, the Kyrie, Kawhi, Kemba, and Jimmy Butler, I believe, will be the focus of their max level talent type guys. And rather quickly, they'll figure out whether there's interest or not. And if there is, then you go back to New Orleans and you just talk about the date. And even if New Orleans says, you know what, we want to use that number four pick and we want the guy, our, our draft pick, to be able to be playing in summer league so he's need to sign his deal, we can't wait that long. Then you go back to Anthony Davis's camp and you say, hey, we have a guy who's willing to take a financial sacrifice to come in here. Will your guy take the sacrifice to waive the trade kicker? And that's not unprecedented. Kyrie Irving, when he requested a trade out of Cleveland, got traded to Boston, he waived his trade kicker to allow the Celtics to have more flexibility to make that team better. I could certainly see a scenario where one of those top-tier guys said, you know what, I will take that sacrifice because I'm only signing a two-year deal anyway because the, the guys they're targeting are all less than 10 years in the league. They'll mm -hmm. want to get out and get that new max deal. 
perhaps if they make that sacrifice, Anthony Davis will make the sacrifice as well. Uh, keep this on the, uh, in mind on the other side. The Pelicans agree to the trade on July 6th. They will have $21 million in cap space compared to just $16 million on July 30th. So in theory, they could demand more assets from the Lakers for agreeing to the later timetable. We'll see how this plays out, Dave. Thank you. K.O.? Because, Kevin, gamblers expected them to do something like the AD trade, the Lakers were already title favorites, but in case you're torn between them and the Warriors, or say the Clippers and the Kings, Vegas offering a very interesting prop bet. They're giving plus 175 odds for any team from California winning the 2020 title, meaning you would have to bet $175 to win 100 or $1.75 to win one. You're like me. You know who's not happy about all this? The Celtics, or as they're known in Boston, the guys that don't go to the finals. Uh, Woj is back with us. No AD. Who knows about Kyrie? I assume they're down to plan B or plan C. What is it? How do they handle this? Well, Keith, Boston has a lot of options because they have so many draft picks going forward. They've got three in this draft. They have uh, picks owed to them in the future. And they can use those uh, to go out around the league right now and see what kind of players are available. You know, they need to see what Al Horford's going to do. He can opt out of his contract, become a free agent that he could opt out and do an extension with Boston or he could go somewhere else but I think with the fact that they are really concerned and, and almost to the point of resignation that Kyrie Irving is going to leave them it changes the dynamic Terry Rozier is a restricted free agent they can match any offer sheet and keep him so Boston's got a lot of options they have assets but I'm told they have been really aggressive out in the marketplace again three picks in Thursday's NBA draft, I'm told they don't want to have three rookies on the team. You could expect one way or another, at least one, maybe two of those picks end up somewhere else. All right, well, that would be by trade, and that leads to another question. Three days out, give us the name, give us a big name of somebody who might get dealt that maybe we're not expecting. Well, Mike Connolly in Memphis. I mean, Memphis is going to draft John Morant at number two. He's clearly their point guard of the future. They traded Marcus Gasol at the trade deadline. When they also discussed deals around the league, for uh, Mike Conley, and there's a tremendous market for him out there. There's teams who, there's some teams who think, do we want to get ahead of free agency, make a deal for Connolly, not being sure whether D'Angelo Russell, for example, with the Nets, will he be a restricted free agent? Or will he be unrestricted? So I think there's teams who want to get out in front on Mike Connolly, and Memphis is going to have some decisions to make, and I think some pretty robust offers for a player uh, who can really come in, fit in in almost any situation, uh, and help a team win. Adrian Wojnarowski, good to see you in person here in Fun City. You too, Thank Keith. you kindly. Thanks.